We process whatever we see and we turn it into a frame of mind that we can understand and accept. And even in the face of great change, we do something internally that takes that event and make it into what seems normal, even if it isn't, such that by taking it in as normal, over time we get used to the massive change, such that we, I suppose, don't really have to do anything about it. And it is that part of changing that makes this so difficult to adjust. By changing the experience of what we see, such that we think it becomes normal, even if it isn't, it means that we don't have to do anything about it. I think uh, everybody has a series of life events that they go back to, that they, implicitly or not, change the way they look at the world by what they see. And in my case, it was seeing the girl dying of thirst. I remember seeing it in the paper. I cut it out, I held onto it, I put it in my wallet. And it was one of those events that I sat there and thought, the question that I've really got to ask myself, what am I going to do about it? Am I going to be a doer and actually try to do something? Or am I going to just say, gosh, terrible picture, hope somebody else deals with it? I chose to go do something about it. Uh, I'm not sure I necessarily knew at the time, because it was 19 years ago that I saw that photograph, that I knew exactly what I'd go do. But it led me on a path whereby I changed my career from being just a straight venture capital investor to being an investor to try and make change. The second event was seeing the B-15 iceberg. Um, icebergs break away all the time, um, but the size of this one, B-15, hadn't happened before. It was so massive on every scale that it, it forced the question, okay, what now? And that question added to the picture that I'd seen previously told me that things were going to get very bad and therefore I needed to act. Well, I think, you know, it's one of the most exciting times. Nanotechnology has been around ever since the universe was created. It's, it's nothing more than mixing and mac matching molecules, putting them together in different shapes and sizes. I mean, I talk about it all the time. It's just moving Lego pieces around. Um, until recently, we haven't had the ability to deal with molecules and move them around at the nanoscale. But now that we have, it means anything is possible. Of all the combinations in the world of possible elements, we've only really sort of scratched at the surface about what we could make. Uh, I think the statistic is if you take sort of two combinations of periodic table elements, we know what 82% of them make. You take three, four, five combinations of elements, we know next to nothing about them. That means there's trillions of combinations that we haven't even tried yet. So I think the age of discovery that we're about to go into is going to be one of the most massive ages of discovery ever seen before, and it's going to spring innovation on a scale that will literally spin our heads, but it will spin up also uh, innovation that may well change everything about what we know.